I'm Sony Artisan Patrick Murphy Racy here to talk to you about my favorite camera, the A7C Mark II. Uh, some of you might be really surprised that it's not the Alpha One. Now, yeah, that's my favorite camera for shooting sports, but for everything else, including video production, that's my favorite camera for sure. <music> So let's do my top six reasons why I think you should buy an A7C Mark II. Number one, the 32 megapixel sensor, which is the same one that's in the A7 IV. This is a huge 32 megapixel sensor. It's a massive sensor that is super capable in low light, which is usually not found together unless it's a Sony, it seems like. But that sensor is the reason why you should be buying cameras. Um, the feature list of a camera is no longer the most important thing. In mirrorless, you wanna know what the sensor is inside. And this one is a proven sensor. The a7 IV and the a7C Mark II share the same sensor, and it's fantastic. It's great in low light, it's great at 50 ISO, it's great kind of wherever you have it. It renders a large file with tons of dynamic range and headroom. Number two. This camera weighs a pound, one pound, with a battery and a card in it, one pound. It's crazy. Um, it still boggles my mind uh, when I pick it up. And by the way, that's half the weight of a Nikon Z8. Ouch. This camera has seven stops of image stabilization built in through its in-body image stabilization. So the, the, the sensor actually moves in three different directions and compensates for you coughing, sneezing, walking, whatever. Uh, but it's an amazing uh, sensor and it really allows you to do handheld photography with extremely sharp results from whatever lens you choose. This little guy has 10-bit video and Cinetone S on board. It can shoot 10 frames a second and do continuous autofocus at that speed with a 32 megapixel sensor. Now that's saying something. The A7C Mark II has an incredibly long battery life. It uses the Z battery that was debuted in the Alpha 9. And uh, because of its tiny, tiny size, it just sips power, especially if you shoot on electronic shutter. Just last week, I did a big uh, higher education shoot where I shot 2,855 photographs on one battery charge. Seriously, incredible. The only pain point I would say about this camera is I wish it had a dual card slot, not like two. I wish it had the Type A and the SD in them. It doesn't bother me so much that it only has one card slot. When you get a camera like this, you want it to be as small and tiny as possible. And they put the SD in there only. And I really, that's the pain point for me. I wish it was a Type A accessible card, but hey, maybe a 7C Mark III, we'll see. Now, the next thing I wanna do is talk about my favorite lenses to use with the A7C Mark II. And this would also be with the A7C R, but I don't own the R. I own two of these uh, because I love it so much. So the very first lens might surprise you. It's an APS-C lens and it's this 11 millimeter 1.8 that's designed for the APS-C. And you might think, why in the heck would you have that on an A7C Mark II full frame body? Well. The reason is because I do a fair amount of vlogging. When I ride the motorcycle, this is my combo for vlogging, it's great. So the next lenses are a set of three, and that's these three. These are the compact primes that Sony has been making for quite a while now. Uh, there's that age old question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? And in, in this case, the, these three lenses came before the camera was invented, which is kind of cool. The compact primes are itty, tiny, bitty, lenses that weigh very little. They all have the dual linear autofocus motor, so they're really quick and fast, and they're extremely sharp, uh, but they weigh almost nothing, and they take up almost no room in your bag or your pocket. There's a 24 millimeter 2.8, there's a 40 millimeter 2.5, and a 50 millimeter 2.5. And those lenses right there compromise a great kit for doing street photography which is how I use them all the time on the A7C Mark II. The next two lenses I love on the A7C Mark II are the 20-70 to F4G. You kind of buy this one and you're done. 
I mean, for travel, this is a great way to go. You can shoot everything from portraits to super wide landscapes and everything in between. Um, I really love how small and compact it is because this is equivalent of like two to three lenses, but it's just one lens. Uh, so I, I use this one a lot uh, as I travel. For doing landscape work, if you, if you travel to beautiful places and you love to shoot landscapes, the uh, FE uh, 1635 PZ lens is tremendous on this. This combo is great. I just spent a week in Nevada at the Valley of Fire with the A7CR, and I, I brought only the 1635 G and the new 7200 F4G and had no, no complaints whatsoever. It was great. And the pictures are really, really sharp. And last but not least, there's a kit lens that might seem like not so obvious, but this is the... Um, the FE 28 to 60. Now it's a little on the slow side, but it's also on the light side. It weighs almost nothing. It has a pancake design where you basically move it and then you get your zoom range and then when you store it again, it gets really tiny and small. So the 2860 probably doesn't have a great reputation among pro photographers, but as a kit lens, it is easily the choice for just being really, really sharp. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, lens if you just want to have the smallest, lightest possible uh, kit. I will probably be doing a lot more video content on the A7C Mark II in the future because I use it all the time. Um, I've only had the camera for a week and I've already shot three major assignments with it. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is stop and kind of show you some of the pictures I've been making um, on those assignments. So let's do that now. Okay, I'm gonna start by showing you a picture. This is A7C Mark II. This is the 51.4 at F2. It's some high-speed sync with a FJ400 strobe. Um, I love the camera uh, so far for portraits. I, I wanna do more. I've only got two to show you because I just haven't had any portrait gigs lately. And I've only had the camera a week. So, But I love this, uh, the way her skin looks, all that, it's great. And then, Especially look in the background, the highlights are really resolved beautifully. Um, the white here, this is a big white tent. There's like highlights on the truck and back here in other vehicles. Uh, the sensor is just a really beautiful sensor. It really renders well. I think I definitely, I did do some uh, uh, vignette on this too. So it's, you know, that's not natural, but that's me. This is my friend Gary, um, known him for a really long time. He's a photographer in Knoxville. Great guy. He got me involved and interested in the in volunteering for the festival. So um, it's really cool. Same lens, uh, same camera, obviously. Uh, but I really like the way, you know, so many people talk about Sony uh, color science. I don't know what that all means. All I know is people look great. <laughs> and uh, when you've got, you know, the uh, larger megapixel of the A7C2, it's great. This is just a kind of a craft shot. Just all these homemade artisans come from Appalachia and it's pretty cool. But I really like, again, the way that the, um, there's really nothing blown out totally. There's still tone virtually everywhere. Um, even in the highlights in the background, there's tonality, which I really, really like. Now this picture would have given a lot of challenge to people in the past um, with A7. The A9, A92, and the A1 have always been my favorite for autofocus accuracy. But when you're backlit, it challenges even those cameras. And this is a severely backlit situation. And this thing is just wailing on IAF. It never left that guy's face. So even though he's like got a bright sky behind him and everything, this is just a really, really nice picture. Uh, another thing is the accuracy of the autofocus. Um, I went down to uh, the smallest setting for uh, tracking flexible spot S for small. And I was able to, you know, time and time again, I could get the, uh, the bit um, in sharp. And you can even see little kind of, you know, stuff flying, little pieces of wood as he's etching into this. Uh, I think it's a bowl or a vase or something. But it's just really um, nice to be able to have the autofocus do what you want it to do. It's kind of just a not a great picture, but it just shows people shopping. And it's very extremely variants of light. So she's in kind of a bright shade with this umbrella lighting her up. She's getting reflection from the umbrella. And that's where the light's hitting her. It's nice and warm. 
Then you got him out in bright sunlight with highlights on his forehead and the top of his arms. She's got the you know gray hair with all this highlight, but there's still tone there. Uh, and even somebody in, in full shade uh, is looking good, even here too. So this sensor is really, again, I keep using the word special, but I really love this sensor. It's a great sensor, this A7 IV sensor. And the color obviously is pretty sweet. So this is, uh, you know, when you get into covering live music, um, you really want to have a camera with a high frame rate. And 10 frames a second is more than enough. It's great. Uh, there's a trumpeter and a jazz band. Um, again, a little word about color science. You have to take blue. You have to add blue to most uh, African-American faces to get the red out. A lot of people don't do that, but um, it's, uh, it's important. Just bump the blue a little bit, and then uh, you just open up shadow detail, and then bam. You know, you got a picture that actually makes people look like they look for real. This guy's a friend of mine. He's quite a player. He plays all kinds of wind instruments. But again, you can see just how sharp and how accurate the autofocus is. This is a 51.4 wide open. And it's all over his eyeball behind his glasses. It's not a problem. It just wails in there. So it's the autofocus is really great. I wanted to put a little, this is like a little TV commercial here for uh, electronic shutter versus mechanical. Whenever you see kind of things like this, like the drumsticks are all bent up, you've got to change to mechanical shutter. So as soon as I saw this in a, in a preview frame, I was like, oops, just me I went over to mechanical shutter and then bam, now you're tight. So this is, he's actually drumming faster than in this frame, but here the sticks are straight because there's not the distortion from the, uh, the jello effect from electronic shutter. And then as soon as I left that and I went back to just shooting normal stuff, I went right back to electronic shutter because it works great and it gives my battery huge life. Um, this is uh, the band, just him turn around. And it's, it's like <laughs> they're having such a good time. But note, uh, this is again, 2414. It is reaching way in a very wide field of frame and it's going all the way to eye, eye autofocus on the person that I began tracking. And you got to put a baby in there because babies are awesome, right? Okay, this is a different assignment. I spent two days doing sort of a higher education thing at a medical school. And um, so here's a high-speed sync image, uh, 500 of a second. Uh, it was like kind of early morning, right after dawn. And uh, just a study group. But uh, again, the way it handles people's faces, I, I really like it. Um Here's the 51.4 again. As you can see, I'm really giving that lens a workout because I want to know all about it. We didn't have a lot of people, and so we had to make this room look full. We just spread them out, and it's great. You can just use the bokeh to blow things out. It's really nice. But look how sharp it is on her face. I mean, it's just like, bam. I mean, I'm going to actually zoom in on this one just so you can see. You can see the blood vessels in her eyes. I mean, that's just, that's wicked. I love, I love that lens. I love this sensor. Same thing, just a different, you know, changing up. This is, you know, using natural light coming through way overexposed to just rim light our hair. And um, I put this one in there because it's not a great picture, but um, he is not a, you know, normal complexion. He's an Indian guy. And um, in the background on his left, it's daylight wailing in there into this big room. But we're in an alcove where there's a pool table. The pool table has a, um, a horrible green light over the top of it, uh, which is, you know, a fluorescent light. And then above that are tungsten lights. So this is three different color temperatures all mixed together. And the... Uh, a7C2 made a nice plotted solution uh, in auto white balance. I didn't touch the color on this. I'm amazed that it's as good as it is. This is the 7200 F4, um, 6400 ISO, no problem. Uh, the low light, I haven't shot a night game yet. Uh, I will do that even though it's frustrating using a 10 frame per second camera now because I'm spoiled. <laughs> but this camera is really good in low light. It does a great job. Again, talk about mixed lighting. There's um, there's tungsten lights above the room. There's windows on the sides of this big classroom, and then the projectors are causing all kinds of havoc because their 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 lighting is all over the place. 
And so I don't know what it is, but the, um, the anti-flicker uh, combined with the auto white balance did a great job with the A7C2, no problem. I put this one in there. It's not a great picture. Again, this is like a kind of a memorial garden. Um, but what's significant about it is there was really very little tone in the sky, and I was able to do highlight recovery and just pull the highlights in for the sky up here. So this is kind of white, but there was tons of information in the JPEG, and I was able to make it a really nice picture, and they, they really liked it. They needed a really good picture of this, of this spot. Again, this is uh, fluorescent lights underneath the countertops. Then there's these uh, weird LED lights that are, that, are, that are the ceiling fixtures. And then behind me, it's daylight. So three different color temperatures all mixed together here. Um, and each person, you can see how the red in her face and how there's not as much red here. Uh, but the auto white bounce work great. Another really good example of... Uh, the sky, look at the sky. These guys are in shade. I mean, they're in total shade and the sun is out and yet there's tone up there. I mean, it's just great. Really, really nice. Here's another image wider that shows even more highlights in the background and that sky. I love this sensor. It's just, now this is another place. This is me popping up. Uh, I've got that FJ 400. I'm popping off the ceiling with a light bank on it, trying to get really low. So I'm shooting at a hundredth of a second at 1.4 with a 35 GM. And uh, I just need to light him up a little bit. And they are in a preview room where they're looking into rooms that are all video. And so I was able to balance the screens and it's just a lot of stuff going on here. But the cameras, the, the sensor is so forgiving that it just works really well. Same thing here, that the tint on the windows is really heavy, heavy, uh, warm, unfortunately. And at some point, I'll probably have to go in here and do some crazy blue gels on a strobe to get it to be correct on the other side of the window. But we didn't have that kind of time this day, so I just basically let that go and then uh, shot her. And this is me, again, using the strobe to light her up a little bit, just bouncing off the ceiling and then balancing with the uh, screens. Same thing. Uh, just point this out too, like right here, her eye, the camera is doing IAF right like beyond these heavy frames. I mean, I just, it's cool. It's really cool. Uh, so again, another mixed light classroom. There's daylight coming in the sides and there's like these um, these LEDs that look like fluorescence. Then there's the projectors bouncing weird light off the huge screens that span the entire room. So uh, I'm really impressed with how the uh, auto white balance plot solutions. It's really good. A lot of white here. This is like uh, an anatomy lab. And uh, again, you know, I, I keyed on her. I wanted her like teaching him. And um, so anyway, just, just works. This is a tough shot. Um, I cranked it all the way up to 12,800 ISO to make this work. Uh, 35, one, four wide open. And I was looking for that. I wanted to see her her name on, on her jacket. Excuse me, they call it a coat. My bad. And then, um, you know, she's got, she's looking at his eye. And then I've got highlights bouncing off from this backlight that I created from this light that was in the room. So this is kind of a complicated picture, but it really worked. And it works because of the sensor. I mean, I keep going back to that all the time, but... You know, when I brag about the A7C II or the A7C R, it's like, it's all about the sensors, what, really what you're loving. This is the last picture from that shoot, I'm pretty sure, or second to last. Um, and just uh, just note how, you know, I'm mixing African Americans and, and this girl's really white and how all that's working, even with the background. Um, again, daylight streaming in from these garage doors and then tungsten in the back and in the back of the brewery. Uh, just it's just so nice. It's like going on vacation. I don't have to worry about color like filtration or any of that stuff like when I used to. I just put a couple of these in. This is um, I love. Uh, I work with canine. A uh, bunch of friends of mine are canine officers, and and uh, they do qualifying once a year. And I went out there and shot a little bit uh, early one morning this week, and um, just getting the dogs. And you really can shoot action with this camera. You know, you just have to. You have to go to mechanical shutter. And uh, so um, here's like another 
you know, angle on a bite. Now this is a very dark dog. This is a, like, he's got a black face and, uh, obviously I'm backlit and I'm looking at this black dog and there's just tone everywhere. I mean, and I didn't really work that hard on this one. Maybe I should have worked harder, but this is a nice picture and it. It really, um, but the tonal range is all, it's like all there. Hey, one last thing. I would love for you to use my affiliate links to purchase any of these lenses or the camera that I've been talking about, the A7C Mark II. It really helps me to continue to do content like this one. Thanks so much for watching.